continuing looking at virtualization. In the last videos, we discussed what virtualization is and how it can be used. Today, we're going to look at one of the more popular virtualization programs called VirtualBox. VirtualBox is a uh, virtualization program developed by Sun Microsystems and it's free and very stable and very easy to use. As you can see here on my desktop I have a uh, Sun XVM VirtualBox icon for Windows and VirtualBox is readily available for um, Windows, uh, Mac, and Linux. Let's go to the internet. I'm going to show you where this VirtualBox can be downloaded. Yeah. VirtualBox is a really easy to use virtualization program and is always up to date. Some microsystems come out with updates constantly, so it has support for various operating systems and new operating systems as they um, come out. In here, I'm on the virtualbox.org website. This is where you can go and download VirtualBox directly from its site and we have here the download links and these are binary files you can go ahead and download the latest version for Windows latest version for Mac, Linux, Solaris the developers kit if you want to get it from Sun you can go ahead and go to Sun Microsystems and you can view you can see VirtualBox on this panel here you can go ahead and say download and you will be you have various download links here and once you click download you see version for Windows, Linux, Solaris and Mac OS 10 so go ahead and download it. I already have it installed so I'm not going to go through the installation process but once you have it installed you can go ahead and freely install operating systems and create your own virtual machines so let's take a look at VirtualBox if we open it up I just upgraded uh, or updated my VirtualBox before this video and when upon opening it for the first time you will have this register form that you can fill out I'm just gonna cancel that for the sake of this video and the version that I am currently running here is version 3.0.4. Now this is the version for Windows. In the next, uh, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to show you the one for Mac. And this is VirtualBox. Very easy and um, very simple, very simple program that will easily allow you to run um, different guest operating systems on your system. Let's go to uh, Mac and see VirtualBox for it. I'm going to go ahead and type in VirtualBox because I also have it installed on my Mac system. And I too has just recently updated it. Once it gets going here, you can go ahead and view VirtualBox for Mac. And here we have VirtualBox for Mac. As you can see, they both look quite similar on both Windows and Mac. And they also it also looks very similar on Linux. So if you're using a Linux system, let's let's look at this. Once you have VirtualBox installed, you'll see here on this left panel here a blank white spot. This is where your saved guest virtual machines will be in here once you create them. And here, once you have them created, you can go ahead and view the settings and change settings and tweak some of the 
settings to fit your preferences. So once you go ahead and download it, it's necessary to click on new so that you can go ahead and create a new virtual machine. And this is a very easy setup. And all you got to do is go ahead and enter the name of the operating system or the uh, virtual machine you want to create. Let's say if I want to create a Windows XP computer, I can do that. And before we continue, I want to show you the various operating systems that currently support is supported by VirtualBox. For Windows, you can go ahead and install Windows 3.0. 1 to Windows 7 and other Windows and as you can see we have all the mainstream Windows we have Windows 95 98 me we have uh, NT4 we have 2000 XP uh, 2003 Vista 2008 and so forth various Linux distributions we can install a Linux Debian, Arch Linux, OpenSUSE Linux, Fedora, Gentoo, Mandravia Red Hat, Turbo Linux, Ubuntu, which is my favorite, Solaris. We can go ahead and install Solaris and Open Solaris, BSD, FreeBSD, OpenBSD, and NetBSD, IBM OS2 Warp, various operating systems on that and other which include DOS, Netware, and so forth. So I say if I want to create a Windows XP uh, virtual machine, I'll name it Windows XP. And we're going to give it some memory here. And you can customize how much memory your system can have, your virtual machine can have. Now your this memory is virtual memory that's coming off your actual system. So if your actual computer has uh, let's say 2 gigs of memory then the highest amount you can give a virtual machine is 2 gigs of memory. And I'll just stick with the default now it needs a hard disk. Now this is very easy. All we have to do is create a hard disk and we're going to make the hard disk bootable. So we're just going to go ahead and create a new hard disk. And, the, and this hard disk is where your operating system will be installed and where all of your and where all of the content for the operating system will be in. So we have the disk type, we have a dynamic expanding storage and a fixed size uh, storage. Dynamic means that it's going to, uh, the disk size will gradually uh, get bigger and bigger the more content you add on the operating system. We can actually give, customize the amount of storage on the operating system here. 10 gigs. We can go ahead and change this to more if we so desire. And there we go. We have a little summary here. And it's finished. And there's only one more step that we would have to do after this. And after you have created the virtual machine, if you have a CD, the Windows XP operating system disk, Go ahead and insert that into your computer and um, you can start up your virtual machine and install Windows XP from the Windows XP CD. Now, if you're going to install an operating system and it's not going to be an ISO file, you're going to have to have the disk. This virtual machine did not literally create a Windows XP operating system for the virtual machine. We just simply created the components and the hard disk. You actually have to have the Windows XP, the Windows Vista, or any other disk that you need for the operating system if it's not an ISO file. And upon starting it up, and we see here 
the Windows XP is booting up or has the virtual machine has started up. I'm going to stop the video here and we're going to do a second part and in the second part of uh, VirtualBox we'll look at uh, what this message means because it's very important and we'll look at creating more virtual machines than Windows and in Mac. That's it for this video.